Hey guys, welcome back. This is my final project video for how to design and simulate a quadruped robot using Atoms. Atoms is an entry standard application to perform multi-body dynamic motion analysis. Simulation software like Atoms has helped engineers study dynamic motion of moving parts, predict force distribution through a mechanical system, and help optimize a design before manufacturing. Simulation software enables engineers to easily create and test virtual prototypes in a fraction of time and cost compared to physical units. This project consists of modeling and simulation of a four-legged walking robot. The robot was drafted using Fusion 360 and the simulation was conducted using Atoms. This video will cover the process of importing a completed CAD model from Fusion 360 into Atoms and setting up an Atoms environment to perform a general simulation. The first step of any virtual simulation is to develop an accurate model representation of your desired subject. A model can be created directly in Atoms or in any other CAD software and later imported into Atoms. The quadruped robot used in this project was made in Autodesk's Fusion 360 software. As you can see, this is our CAD file in Fusion 360. The specific process necessary to model an object will be dependent on the CAD software used. However, there are a few key procedures that will make importing a model into Atoms easier. First, it is important to choose the correct orientation to sketch your design in. In Atoms, the default direction of gravity is along the y-axis, and building the model with this in mind will simplify the importing process. Our robotic dog will be walking down a street. Our desired direction of gravity is perpendicular to the robot's orientation. Because of this, we model our robot dog in the XY plane, so that the Y plane will be vertical. After creating your CAD file, it is not uncommon to have a model that consists of dozens or even hundreds of components. However, the student version of Atoms is limited by the number of components that can be imported. The student version of Atoms only allows a maximum of 20 bodies into a given assembly. Our quadruped robot consists of 45 individual components, so simply importing the entire model will not be possible. To import a large model into Atoms, the model needs to be simplified by combining bodies. Our quadruped can be simplified into 14 bodies or sub-assemblies. The first assembly is the floor. The floor will be the object that the robot will be walking on. The second component is the main body that all the legs are made into. Lastly, each of the four legs are made of three components, the shoulder, the upper leg, and the lower leg. With the key sub-assemblies identified, each assembly can be combined into one single component. We will do this by using the combined utility in Fusion 360. For example, the joint three of the quadruped robot consists of three components. These components are rigidly connected to each other and can be treated as one single assembly. To join these individual components, they were all selected and combined using the combined utility function. The output is a single component made from a single body as shown. With the model completed and the assembly simplified to honor 20 components, the file can now be exported from the CAD software. Atoms support a wide variety of file types. In this project, we will export our model as the step file. To export the model from Fusion 360, we will first select the file icon located on the top left of the screen. We will then select export and choose our file type of STEP. After exporting our file, we will now move on to Atoms. Atoms can be downloaded directly from the Hexagon Online Student Portal. However, it is required to register a new student account prior to downloading the Atoms software. To register a student account, a copy of the user's student ID must be submitted to Hexagon for account review. The Atoms software can be installed once the account is verified after three to five days. With the Atoms software installed, we will now begin a new project. To start a new project, open Atoms View. A new project can be made 
by selecting the new model icon and configuring the startup settings. Here, you can assign the project name and adjust the units of measurements. Next, we're going to click apply to create a new project. With the new project initialized, it is now time to import the CAD file that we created from Fusion 360. To import a new file, use the file import command found on the settings bar. A pop-up menu will appear where the user will specify the imported file name, file location, and choose the model name to assign it. For this project, we are importing a step file and choosing the model name to be the same as the project name. Once completed, we will apply these settings and our file will be imported. Once the model is imported, it should be seen on the right viewport of the application. The imported model should be appeared in the correct orientation if the model was made so that the Y axis was vertical. If not, the model needs to be corrected at this time. The next step is to configure the individual body properties. All bodies imported can be seen underneath the bodies folder located on the left viewport. The name of each body can be specified for a better description of the object. The material type of each body can be specified underneath the modify option when right clicking the individual component. For this project, all bodies were assigned aluminum as their material type. After configuring the individual components, the next step is to configure the connections between each component. A connection defines the degree of freedom between two bodies at a specific location. For example, an industrial robot with six degrees of freedom will have six joints. Each connection will be located at a joint where one body can slide or rotate relative to another body. Our quadruped contains 12 degrees of freedom and so has 12 joints. An additional fixed joint was used to steadily lock our floor component. There's a variety of connection options that can be selected underneath the connection tab. For our application, we selected the hinge connections. A hinge forms a joint with one rotational degree of freedom between two bodies at a specific location. Upon selecting the our joint desired, an option menu will appear on the left viewport. To apply our desired joint, begin by selecting the first body you wish to mate. Next, select the second body you wish to mate. Lastly, select the connection location or point. A center of rotation axis will appear normal to the normal grid and then select the point. The normal grid orientation can be modified by selecting the normal grid options on the bottom right of the screen. It's best to modify your normal grid prior to making a joint connection. After forming a joint connection, it will appear on the left viewport. Verify that the joint is properly configured. Correctly configuring the joints are critical to the final motion simulation. After completing all your joint connections, it's now time to move on to the force connections. Our model contains two types of forces, the force due to gravity and the force of each leg interacting with the floor. The gravitational force is automatically configured when specifying the material type of each body and the direction of gravity assigned to the project. All other forces will need to be manually configured for your application. A wide variety of forces can be selected on the force tab. As mentioned, the only other type of force used in our simulation is the interaction force generated by each leg colliding and interacting with the static ground. This type of force interaction is called a contact force. Each body that interacts with the floor is required to be assigned a contact force. Four contact forces were used in our project. To configure a contact force, begin by selecting the contact force icon found on the special force group under the force tab. Under the I solid settings, select the top face of the floor as the first body. Underneath the J solid settings, select the face of the leg which interacts with the floor. Once both bodies are defined, the contact forces can be successfully applied. Repeat this process for all four independent legs. 
After creating the contact forces, the next step is to define the friction force between the leg and the floor. The friction force is critical to the walking robot's ability to move across the surface without slipping. Each contact force can be modified and a friction force applied as shown. For this project, we will use the column uh, function to determine the friction force. The last step needed for the simulation is to configure the motion. A motion function will need to be defined for each joint. A joint's motion function will control the rotation or translation of the joint during the simulation cycle. To create a new motion function, select the desired motion type underneath the motion tab. After selecting the desired motion function, select the joint you wish to apply the motion function to. For this project, we will only be using the hinge motion function and we will apply this to each of our 12 joints. Under the joint motion settings, define the motion type as function. Select the function settings to open the function builder window. Under the function builder, the user will write a step function that will control the simulated motion. A step function specifies the motion a joint will make at a specific time. A step function is written with five inputs. The first input specifies the type of step function. By application, we'll be using time. The second input specifies the time the step function begins. The third input specifies the desired starting joint position. The fourth input specifies the desired end time of the function. The fifth input specifies the final joint position. So, for example, I will make a step function that will allow the robot to bend down. We'll run the simulation and see how well it works. Perhaps we would like the robot to jump. So I will write my step function. We'll run the simulation. Great. Now it's time to write our step function to allow the robot to walk. Before developing a step motion sequence, it is useful to plan out the desired motion. For this project, each leg will transition between a forward position and a backwards position. This ideal position informs us the joint angles to use in the step function. To make the motion between two positions, a sequence of intermediate steps was chosen as shown. After planning out the ideal pathway for each leg, we moved into developing the specific step function for each joint. After some trial and error, a list of step functions were generated for each leg. We have now com completed configuring the body information, the joint connections, the force connections, and the motion functions. The model is now fully defined and the simulation can now be executed. The objective of our simulation is to demonstrate a successful quadruped locomotion. To open the simulation control, select the simulation gear icon. For our simulation, we specified a duration of 15 seconds. The number of steps in the simulation will determine the frame rate of the simulation. We specified a step of 10,000 for our simulation, equivalent to roughly 66 frames per second. Once the simulation control is configured, the simulation can be executed by pressing the play button. After a few trials, a successful motion simulation was made where the robot was able to walk 15 meters. Data from the simulations can be exported using graph functions. The distance and velocity of the robot during the simulation is shown here. The robot is able to travel 15 meters with a constant velocity as shown in this figure. As seen in this velocity chart, the robot had a smooth acceleration and deceleration between each step. Each joint of the robot was controlled by a step function, and the motion generated by the step function can be exported as a chart as well. These two figures shows the angle of all the joints in the front two legs of the robot over the simulation period. 
The goal of this project consists of the successful modeling and simulation of a four-legged walking robot. With Adams, we were able to successfully simulate our quadruped robot locomotion. With this, our project is now completed. We'll be releasing all of our files on GitHub. If you find this video helpful, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.